Hundreds of thousands of people in Ivory Coast are too afraid to return to their homes for fear of reprisals after November's disputed election. Is Alassane Ouattara failing in his pledge to restore order and security throughout the country? And what does the future hold for Ivory Coast? This is Inside Story. Welcome to the program. I'm Hazem Seeker. A new report by Amnesty International says that Ivory Coast security forces and a state-backed militia are creating a climate of fear that's preventing hundreds of thousands of displaced people returning to their homes. The Human Rights Group also reports killings and other abuses by forces loyal to President Alassane Ouattara after they ousted former President Laurent Gbagbo in April this year. Stephanie Decker has more. They have food and water. But the gun guarding this camp for displaced people in western Ivory Coast is an indication that not all is well. The stories told here are of violence and fear. I was rolled into a mattress and they tied me up. They leaned me against a tree and tied me to it. They poured petrol over me and set me alight. Well, thanks to God, the rope was cut by the fire and I fell. A new report by Amnesty International says that ethnic violence continues in the country, two months after President Alassane Ouattara was sworn in. Both supporters of Ouattara and the deposed President, Lauren Bagbo, were accused of human rights abuses during the disputed elections. And now it seems nothing has changed. During the war we hid in the bush and after the swearing in of President Ouattara, we went back to the village. We arrived at a roadblock and the youngest amongst us was wearing a t-shirt with a photo of Laurent Bagbo. We were all arrested and they said, your problem of Bagbo is that we will kill you all. So the young one was tied up, his feet were tied and they cut his throat. According to the report, half a million people remain too scared to return to their homes and Amnesty largely points the blame at men loyal to Alassane Ouattara. But at a meeting in the United Nations in New York, the president voiced his commitment to stabilizing his country. I'd like to say strongly that uh, we want the rule of law in Côte d'Ivoire. We want to uh, protect citizens, uh, all the people. Uh, we want to abide by uh, human rights. Uh, this is very important for us. We do not want uh, discrimination. We believe in diversity and uh, we don't want to accept impunity in Côte d'Ivoire. The UN voted on Wednesday to extend its peacekeeping presence in the country for another year. Ivory Coast has been divided by a civil war since 2002. The recent democratic election was hailed as a chance for a peaceful future, but the amnesty report shows it's only creating further divisions. Stephanie Decker for Inside Story. All right, well, let's take a closer look now at uh, the uh, Amnesty International uh, report. It says two months after President Alassane Ouattara was formally sworn in, the militias loyal to him are still intimidating supporters of former President Laurent Gbagbo. The report finds serious human rights violations and abuses have been committed in Ivory Coast since the arrest of former President Laurent Gbagbo on the 11th of April 2011. It also finds that these violations have been committed by the Republican forces of the Ivory Coast, better known as the FRCI, and DOZOs, which is the pro-government militias. It goes on to say 670,000 people across the country remain displaced. 500,000 internally displaced and some 170,000 as refugees in neighboring countries, mainly Liberia. Of that number, around 55,000 are in the main commercial city of Abidjan. Well, now the Amnesty International report uh, also makes broader recommendations to the government of Ivory Coast uh, so that the displaced Ivorians will be able to return to their homes. Now it calls on the government uh, there to restore and ensure security and to protect human rights, and finally, to put an end to impunity. Well, joining us now uh, to uh, talk more about this are our three guests. In Paris, Gaetan Mutu. He's a West Africa researcher at Amnesty International. In Santander, Spain, Dr. Olidaran Bello. He's a researcher and head of the EU-Africa Relations Program uh, at FRIDA, and that's the Foundation for International Relations and Dialogue. 
And in London, Isiaka Konate, he's the president of the UK chapter of Alassane Ouattara's party, the Rally for the Republicans. Welcome all three of you gentlemen to the discussion. Um, Gaetan Mutu, if I could start with you since you're one of the, uh, the principal authors of this uh, report. Uh, what kind of reaction have you been getting from the government in, in Ivory Coast? And are you um, confident that any effort is being made uh, to stop these abuses? Uh, we do recognize that there have been kind of some commitments, kind of oral commitments by the Ivorian authorities. However, when we have been in the field, both in Yopougon and in the southwest of Côte d'Ivoire around the Sassandra region and also in the western part of the region, in the region of Dwekwe and Giglo, we did a kind of, of clear inclination about the way the authorities want to respect the rule of law because we had been able just to, to meet uh, hundreds of, of, of internally displaced people and, and most for most of the interviews, the main sentences we heard was that we want to go back home, but it's very difficult for us to get back to our initial uh, homelands. And, and it's mainly kind of related to extrajudicial killings, uh, arbitrary arrest and torture, and also violence against women, including rape. So we had been able just to, to interview, I mean, hundreds of people and the, the, the fear, we could, we could just notice the fear uh, while discussing with them. And also uh, we have been able just to, to have kind of concrete testimonies about the human rights violations, which are kind of preventing the internal dispersed people to go back to their homelands. Uh, Isiaka Konate in, in London, you've heard the, uh, you've heard the litany of, of abuses that uh, our uh, guests from Amnesty International in, in Paris uh, uh, just described there and the fear among people there of returning to their homes. So uh, as a member of uh, the president's party, how, are you, how concerned are you about some of the findings of this report? And is, is anything being done about it? Um, thanks for giving me the chance again to talk about this. Um, I think this is a very serious issue and um, obviously I'm very concerned about those, um, those uh, issues being raised in the report which I read. Um, I think this is um, the time for us to um, put an end to all violences in the Ivory Coast and all human rights abuses. With regards to that, I think the president position and the country position has been quite consistent. Um, recently, we, we, we know that the president welcomed the ICC in the Ivory Coast for a full investigation. And we also understand that there would be eight camps of, a, um, of a UN troops in the western part of the country to make sure that we stabilize the area. We've also had the president also had a meeting with the president of Liberia um, uh, so, and also the president of um, Guinea to try to address this, the, the issue around the border because it's a common problem uh, with regards to displacement, um, of the people being displaced and also uh, brutality um, inside Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, let me be clear about something here. We are for a, a law, a, a full, the respect of a law in our country. I know it is a very difficult thing to achieve, but all these reports from um, human rights organizations are well intended, and they would allow us to look deep into the situation and also um, rectify any shortcomings if there are. But, um, the president again was at the UN yesterday. He was cl quite clear about what he intended to do, that every single person responsible for crime will be punished. But there are issues that need to be addressed, and I'm very concerned about that. Well, I mean, you talk about the need to do something uh, about this uh, Isiaka Konate, and, but the question is, question is, is the will to do something really there? I mean, your president has said all of the right things so far, but as far as concrete uh, actions are on the ground, are you confident that any, anything is going to be done? Of course, there has been there has been a lot of action being taken against some of the security forces within the country, and also what we're doing now is to try to work with the international community. We've welcomed all kind of investigation from any human right group to go into the Ivory Coast and fully investigate, and they've got the freedom to do that. And we welcome all criticism because we need those criticism. We need report of uh, Amnesty International, you know, to address some of the issues because their their finding will be really important in addressing. Um, the remaining issues in the western part of the country mainly. Ola Diran uh, Bello, is, there a, is, is Alassane Ouattara failing in his pledge to restore order and security in the country? 
Um, well, I have to start by saying um, that um, the challenges that faces um, the Ivorian president um, are quite daunting ones. Um, the Amnesty International report you talked about, um, I think, um, really went to some length um, in documenting um, a lot of these ongoing abuses um, we're seeing in the country um, months after former President Gbagbo has been um, swept from power. Um, I also have to say that um, history um, is not always a perfect um, guide to the future. Um, but I think in Ivory Coast, um, there are perhaps quite a few things um, um, we can glean from history. And I think going forward, um, that might be very useful um, in terms of combining all the right um, policies going forward um, to make sure that um, this country, which is really promising in many respects, can finally turn a corner. Um, we used to talk about Ivory Coast as um, the beacon of stability in, um, in West Africa. Um, the outbreak of the civil war in the country um, took many by surprise. I have to say that fundamentally many of the um, factors that contributed to the outbreak of this civil war have not gone away. Um, looking forward, I think there are a lot of responsibilities um, that different international stakeholders and of course, the Ivorians themselves and some of the sub-regional players um, have to shoulder um, in the months and years ahead. Um, there would be no easy, um, easy solutions here. Um, you look at the problem, they're very multidimensional. Um, President Al Alassana Ouattara has talked about um, the intention um, of his administration to respect um, the rule of law and to respect um, human rights and make sure all those that are culpable. I mean, many of these abuses um, are finally brought to justice. And I think ECR has also expressed this here very eloquently here today. Um, but it's not going to be easy. I think the challenge going forward is to balance um, quite a number of um, really um, not optimal um, policy alternatives that, that presently confronts the government and all the different Ivorian stakeholders. I think on the one hand, um, there is the need to return to economic vitality as quickly as possible. The country is well capable of doing that, um, but it's not going to happen overnight. Um, the right policy um, decisions would have to be taken. Um, on the other hand, I think um, reconciliation is fundamental, um, but reconciliation itself is in some sense complicated um, by the need to um, ensure justice um, is done um, for many of the victims. Mm -hmm. um, of these abuses we've talked about. How do you balance these two to make sure um, that they do not become a sort of zero-sum um, permutation um, where gains in one respect um, entirely cancels out and um, gains in, in the other respect, I think is the key challenge. Um, the Ivorian president, um, I think, um, has his task cut out. Um, yep. He's going to need all the, um, the support of all the internal actors and all the regional players and the wider international community. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you mentioned a number of, of, of things there, and, and part of the challenge is perhaps um, the security forces uh, that uh, uh, nominally operate uh, under the, the, the president. But isn't, isn't, isn't part of the problem there that uh, there are elements uh, uh, within his, his government security force who are basically operating with impunity, but, uh, 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 mm -hmm. but who, that he depends on for support, uh, for the support that got him to power in the first place? Isn't that part of the problem? Um, you are very right. Um, I think this is a very big part of the problem. Um, you know, what is the Ivorian army at the moment? I think it's a question, um, you know, that we should ask. And there's a big debate to be had about this. Um, the elements of the, um, the, the old national army, um, many of the um, senior officers within the rank supported um, the ousted pre um, former President Gbagbo. Um, a lot of the top functionaries um, in the so-called um, new Ivorian army um, are actually elements um, of the former um, rebel forces, um, the, the former forces nouvelle um, that have um, swept down from the north of the country um, to make sure that Gbagbo is finally um, taken out um, some, some months back. Um, I think the, the, the key challenge for the president is to construct um, a national army um, that's fully integrated in, the, in, in, a, in every sense of the world. And, and this is not going to be easy. Um, these are former enemies that somehow have to now work together um, to, to preserve um, the unity and, 
and make sure um, that the, the future of the country is guaranteed. Um, in another sense, I talked about history early on, and when I look around Africa today, I can perhaps see one or two, three examples um, where what we are seeing in the Ivory Coast today, um, you know, um, resonate. Um, President um, Alassane Ouattara won the election very clearly, as certified um, by the United Nations and the country. Um, but we know the civil war, um, you know, um, got complicated um, in the in the aftermath of that election. Um, we saw. The, um, the, 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 the killings um, that took place then still ongoing up until now. Um, going forward, um, how does the president ensure um, that all these different actors um, you know, within the army can actually um, subordinate themselves to democratically elected um, you know, civilian authority of the country? I think this is going to be a very key challenge. Remember, yeah. All right. in the Democratic that is, that Republic is indeed of the one Congo of the major, just a while one back. One of the major challenges, and I want to put that uh, to our, our guest in uh, London, Iyasaka Konate. Uh, I mean, I, the same question that I asked um, to, uh, to our guest in Santander, that uh, uh, many of these sec security forces are basically uh, operating on their own with, with little uh, um, little supervision, if I can put it that way, uh, I mean, little, little leadership from, from the government. They're basically operating uh, with impunity. Isn't that part of the problem here, that nothing is really being done to stop them? I, I don't think we can say that nothing is being done to stop them. Um, some have been dis disciplined even uh, last week. Um, there are key issues. I have to agree with you. Uh, we have to deal with a situation of uh, discipline within our own forces. But I mean, looking back, the discipline won't, they don't, it's just not from our troops. The discipline problem started long ago in the Ivorian army. And this is a very difficult challenge we've got. But let me put this clear, though. We have a new kind of leadership in the Ivory Coast where everything is being addressed, things are being taken into consideration, and we get getting even criticism from our own partners, you know, we even leave it international for us to address some of the issues, and we will deal with it. This is why the president said yesterday, no one, no one um, responsible of any, of any crime would, 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 would avoid justice. They would have to face justice, would have to build a new Ivorian army, and it's the most difficult thing because we have to take into consideration all the 62 tribes in the Ivory Coast and also how to build a very young army, a young and disciplined liberal young democracy in the Ivory Coast. And um, I have to say it's not going to be easy for us, but the will of changing everything, the willingness, uh, the, our ambition of building a nation based on fairness, democracy, respect of human rights, there is no doubt in the president's mind and in nobody's mind in the Ivory Coast, in the government, with regards to what we intend to do for our new nation and new country. If I could just um, quote to you some of the findings of, of, of this uh, report from Amnesty International, uh, Isiaka. The, the, one, of the, one of the things that they go on to say is the freedom with which some of these uh, militias, known as the dozos, operate, indicates that their actions are uh, tolerated and even instigated at the request of the uh, FCRI. Uh, and, and they say that this is still going on. So, so what evidence is there that enough is being done at this point? Because the, they say that uh, these militias are, are basically manning uh, checkpoints in some of these areas that the, that the people there cannot go back to. That is preventing them from going back uh, to their homes. So that would indicate um, that their actions are in some way being sanctioned by the government. Well, I don't think this is correct. Um, I think uh, you've got to look back that uh, even the Prime Minister within Abidjan have gone out with a ministry, with, with a Minister of um, Interior. He's actually gone out trying to dismantle some of the checkpoints within Abidjan. And th this is something we've been quite clear about that some of the checkpoints need to disappear. And uh, we, the, the government has tried in Abidjan and around the country as well to try to dismantle. And the media, even in the Ivory Coast, have been reporting, journalists have been getting on coaches trying to go from one end of a country to the other. And I've been reporting back to the government and say, this is a, I've been, I, I was going to that part of the country, there are several checkpoints, it's really intimidating, and we are looking into all this, we are addressing all the issues. Uh, this is why, like I said, we've welcomed the African Union, we've welcomed all the international community, the European Union, France, and all the countries, and international human rights Right organization will tell you they've got the freedom to do their work in the Ivory Coast, which, which is something new in our country. So we are doing something. We are working extremely hard. But, you know, we went from a total, uh, we went from a situation where there was no, no law at all 
to a situation we're trying to address. And it's been three months since Gbagbo has left office, and well over three months, and we're still trying coming to terms with so many of the things. And we have to be fair and honest that this is not going to happen overnight. This is a great challenge for us, and we need every, every, everyone's help. We need the help of even Amnesty International to come up with reports where we can rely on and to try to address some of the issues, and then, like I say, to address any shortcomings. We are really up for the challenge. We're up for it. We really want to be, build a new nation. And President Watara said yesterday again, this is a time for Ivory Coast to build a new country based on human human right, respect of human right, and all human right abuses need to be punished. And I, I will keep saying it until um, we get to the point where you know all these crimes are um, met with uh, the full uh, force of justice. Gitan Mutu, do you believe that uh, these crimes will be met with the, with the full force of uh, justice, uh, as our uh, guest in London uh, just said? Do you believe uh, Alassane Ouattara when he says that uh, uh, everyone will meet justice regardless of what side they're on? Yes, I, I will, of course, answer to, 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 to the question you have just put to me. But, but uh, I would, if you allow me just to, to, cut, to make a few comments on what was said a little bit earlier, but I'd like first and foremost just to say that Amnesty has been always working on Cote d'Ivoire over the last decade. And we have always been kind of defending people who were in detention, including the former Prime, the, the prime Minister uh, Guillaume Soro, as well as Blegoudé, Blegu as well as people close to Henri Conan Bédié. So we have been defending all the people who had been meeting difficulties in the past. But having said that, I would like to say a few things regarding the security issue. You have been raising the question of the Dozo acting as a militia group, mainly in the western and southwest of the country. And what we saw, I mean, uh, a month ago is that these, the, 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 this militia group is still kind of very active at checkpoints in the villages preventing most of the internally displaced people to go back to their home places. And also these, uh, the militia groups have been kind of gaining the support of the Republican forces of Cote d'Ivoire. We have been able to discuss with those who were supervising at the checkpoints. And so we had the chance also to meet the head of the, the chief of the Dozo in Dwekwe. And what he has been confirming to us is that he had been receiving orders from the FRCI to carry kind of patrolling and policing work. And we believe that a militia group uh, is not in a position to carry these, the, 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 this kind of work. And also uh, Mr. Ishaka Konate uh, have been saying that uh, it's a new situation uh, and that the government, the authorities, are kind of committing themselves to respect the rule of law. But, but having said that, I'd like also just to make a quick comment. Would like also just to raise to the, attentions of the, to the attention of the international community as well as to the attention of the Ivorian authorities that the new forces, they have been occupying the northern part and part of the western of Cote d'Ivoire uh, since 2002, since September 2002. So, which means that it's not totally new. These forces are quite ancient. It's, it's nearly kind of m m more than nine years now that they are in Cote d'Ivoire and occupying uh, part of the uh, 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 ter territories within the right, country. Oli Dalan, uh, Bello in Satan there. Ivory Coast uh, in recent years, unfortunately, has quite a history of, of violence and instability. Do you see an end to that anytime soon? Um, there are quite a number of positive signs, um, but I think there are um, perhaps worrying signs as well. Um, I think um, the country is um, extremely lucky um, to have as president um, somebody with such an international cloud as Alassane Ouattara does. Um, he was a um, former um, director at the International Monetary Fund, as you are aware. So when he talks about a lot of these challenges, you imagine it's somebody who knows what he's actually talking about. Um, I think the challenge for him um, going forward would um, be to combine the right sort of policies and making the, the right sort of internal compromises um, that the Ivory Coast need um, in order for the country to, um, to come out um, right um, at the end of the tunnel. 
Um, if you look at um, where we are now, I think our friend at um, Amnesty International, the work they do is very important and it's to be, um, it's to be um, saluted and celebrated. Um, the International Criminal Court, as you're aware, is also involved um, in investigating some of these um, abuses going on in the Ivory Coast, and I think we would see prosecutions um, probably taking place in the future. All right, we are, gonna, we are going to have to leave um, it there. We are uh, unfortunately out of time on the discussion, but I want to thank all three of you uh, for taking part. Uh, Gitan Mutu, uh, Olidalan Bello, and Isiaka Konate, many thanks for your time. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story. Just before we go, I want to let you know you can take part in the conversation as well. We we'll welcome your comments. Just email them to us at InsideStory at AljazeeRa.net. Bye for now.